All right, so what's up, what's up? I hope all of you are doing well today. Our topic of conversation today is the job of a freight broker. And do you really understand what your job is? What I've found is that a lot of freight brokers, especially new freight brokers, really don't understand what their job is. When you are talking to shippers and you are saying to the shipper, I am going to move loads on your behalf. You are a representative of the shipper. Some people call that the middleman. You are between the shipper and the carrier. Your responsibility is to represent the shipper. You're moving the shipper's freight. You've said, hey shipper, you don't have to worry about moving this freight from point A to point B. I got that. I'm gonna take care of that for you. Not only am I gonna take care of the load movement, I'm also going to take care of all of the paperwork that comes with this load. I am going to make sure that you get invoiced and that the carrier get paid on time. And of course, I get paid as a freight broker. So I am responsible for the money as a freight broker. I got to make sure that everybody gets paid. And I also want to make sure that all of the paperwork is squared away before I send it to shipper for payment. So what we're going to talk about is the order of that paperwork, how paperwork flows. All right, so let's start off at the top. The very first thing that a freight broker needs to do is to get the shipper's authority to move a load. So that comes with talking to the shipper, explaining your services, finding out what their problems are, offering solutions to those problems, getting authority to move that load. Let's just say the shipper and I are talking about a load that's moving from point A to point B and we agree to a number. I say to the shipper, I can get that load moved for $1,500. The shipper comes back and says, we agree to that number. All right. So once they have agreed to the number that I have given, we're all good on the particulars as far as the load movement. Now they have to give me the authority to move that load. How does that happen? Well, I am going to generate some paperwork, some contracts, because as a freight broker, the first thing that I need is a contract between the shipper and I giving me authority to move that load. So the first contract that I am going to have with the shipper is called a rate quote. When I give the shipper or print out this rate quote, I'm going to send it over to the shipper. He's going to sign it and send it back to me. All of rate quote is, is all of the details of the load, where it's picking up, where it's dropping off, how much money the shipper and I have agreed to move that load from point A to point B. So $1,500 would be on this rate quote. The shipper is going to sign it and send it back to me. Once that shipper signs the document and sends it back to me, now I have the first contract, the rate quote between the shipper and I giving me as a freight broker the authority to move that load. Now, some shippers are going to put another piece of legislation in there, if you will. And that is a tender. A shipper is going to send you back your rate quote that you see, sent him, that's your contract, and he's also going to send you the tender. The tender gives you all the details of the load and it shows how much money the shipper is paying for the total amount of that load and then it breaks it down into a line haul rate and a fuel surcharge. So we are clear on exactly how much money the shipper is paying for this load. And at the bottom of the tender, it always says tender must accompany billing. So when I send in my invoice, I must also send in this tender. So starting off, the first two pieces of paperwork that we're going to have on our desk in a paper clip is our rate quote and our tender. Remember, we're going to send the rate quote to the, to the shipper. The shipper is going to sign it, sign it, and he's going to send us back the rate quote and the tender. We're going to take that paperwork, put it in a paper clip, and now we have the first 
two documents, the first two pieces of paperwork that we need. We have one contract between the shipper and the freight broker, and we have the tender giving us authority to move the load. Step one is complete. I think that step is probably the hardest for most people to complete, but give yourself a pat on the back. You got that part accomplished. Now it's time to move on to step number two. Step number two will require you to get another contract. The reason for that is because you're not moving the load yourself. You're going to use a carrier or truck driver to move that load from point A to point B. So now that we have the load, the first thing that we're going to do is go and post this load to our load board. We're going to say that Alliance Logistics has a load that's picking up in North Carolina, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, going to Atlanta, Georgia. And these are the details. So once we post that load out there and truckers start to see it, if they have a truck in that lane, they are likely to call us to negotiate load movement. Now, it depends on how much time we have to move that load will determine whether or not we're just going to post it and wait for carriers to call us or we'll post that load and start calling carriers. Because if we don't have a whole lot of time, we can't just wait around and hope that carriers call us. Regardless of who calls who, the next step is to start negotiating the details of the load. If the carrier is interested in that load and he calls and we start talking about moving that load from point A to point B, we're going to talk about pickup time, delivery times, the appointment times, and of course, the money, how much money is in the load. When we negotiate all of those details and we come to agreement, the very first thing that we have to do now that we've agreed is send out a carrier package if you are not already set up with that carrier. If you're already set up with the carrier, there's no need to send a carrier package. In this example, let's just say we have already set up with the carrier. So the next thing that we're going to do, once the carrier and I have agreed, we're going to send him out. Our next piece of paperwork is our rate confirmation. So we're going to send this rate confirmation over to the carrier for $1,200. He's going to sign it and send it back to us. So now we have two contracts, one contract with the freight broker and the shipper and one contract with the freight broker and the carrier. So we have the contracts that we need. We have the load covered. So we're going to go ahead and take this second contract. Now we have a rate quote, we have the tender and we have the rate confirmation. Let's get ready for step number three. Step number three, it's time to make your pickup appointment and your delivery appointment. Yes, you can delegate this responsibility to your carrier and have him make his own appointments, but we go ahead and make the appointment for the carrier ourselves. So once the carrier and I talk, I'm going to ask him, what's a good time for you to pick up this load? And then if he tells me three o'clock, once he and I get, get off the phone, I'm going to go ahead and move to step number three and make this appointment for the carrier at three o'clock. I'm also going to make a delivery appointment. So we're set up for delivery and of course for the pickup. If you don't set your pickup and delivery appointment, it could cause you some serious issues. The carrier could get to the pickup and not have an appointment or get to the destination, not have an appointment and not be able to pick up or deliver the load. So make sure you take care of step number three, making the appointments. Now, step number four is the day of pickup. You're probably going to be a little bit nervous because you're not sure whether that carrier is going to pick up. Even if you've worked with the carrier before, sometimes things happen, accidents happen, or they may have gotten held at their last facility and now they're not going to be able to get to your load. So we're not sure 100% just yet that the carrier will pick up the load. So there's some anxiety, a little bit nervousness preparing when you're getting ready to pick that load up. So it is on the morning of pickup. The first thing that I want to do is I want to give that carrier a call to make sure that he's still able to pick that load up. Let's say we have a three o'clock pickup. I'm going to call that carrier around 11 o'clock and just ask the question, are we still on for the pickup today at 3 p.m.? If he says yes, everything is good, man, I'm glad to hear that. Still, we're four hours out though. Well, you know, it's 11 o'clock. We're not picking up till three o'clock. So I want to give him one more call at probably around one o'clock, 130 to make sure that everything is still good. The reason why I want to be so sure is because if he cannot pick that load up, my, my job starts again. I got to get this load covered. 
So I'm trying to make sure that if there are any obstacles in the way, that he make me aware of what those obstacles are so that we can get a contingency plan set up. Step number five, the carrier calls you and tells you he's arrived at the pickup location, he's given his appointment confirmation number, and the consignee has given him a door. That's music to our ears because that means that he is getting loaded or will be getting loaded shortly. Now, once he's gotten loaded, the shipper will give him some very, very important paperwork. The BOL. What is the BOL? The bill of lading. And on this BOL, it has all of the contents of the load. It tells you exactly what's on the truck and what you want your truck driver to do. What any smart truck driver will do, is he's going to check this customer order number and make sure it matches up to the order number that's on his paperwork. You always have to do that as the carrier to make sure that you don't have the wrong load. Step number six, the carrier calls to say he's been loaded. He's verified the paperwork, the customer order number that's on the BOL that he was given by the shipper matches the customer order number that's on the paperwork. So he knows that he has the right load and now he's en route to his destination. So what I'll do now is call the delivery location and let them know that we have an appointment time at 6 a.m. and we expect to arrive on time. Step number seven, the carrier has arrived his pickup location. He's given his appointment confirmation number and now he's been given a door. But he's also been told that he has to pay a lumper fee. So here's what we're gonna do. Either he can pay the lumper fee or I can pay the lumper fee as a freight broker. If he's set up to pay electronic payments because you cannot pay lumper fees in cash, you have to pay them with an EFS check or a com data check so, or any type of electronic check. So in this situation, he's able to pay it. He's going to go ahead and pay the lumper fee and I'll reimburse him on the lumper. Step number eight. The carrier calls back to say he has clean bills. And this really is a time to breathe a sigh of relief because the load has been delivered. And when he says he has clean bills, that just means that there were no items short and no items rejected by the shipper. So now in order to get the money moving, the carrier has to send me all of the remaining paperwork. Remember, I have already the rate quote between me and the shipper, and I have the rate confirmation between the carrier and I, and I have the tender. Now I need the remaining paperwork that the carrier has collected on his end. He's collected the BOL. He also has a receipt showing that he paid for the lumper fee. That way I can reimburse him, of course, through the shipper. I'm not reimbursing him for my money. The shipper is paying for this. And he's also going to send me an invoice. So the carrier is going to send me the BOL, his personal invoice, and his receipt showing that he paid for uh, the lumper fee. Now, step number 10, it's time to get the carrier paid. But before I pay the carrier, I'm going to go over the paperwork to make sure I have everything I need. So first of all, I'm going to include my own invoice before I send this to the shipper so I can make sure that we get paid for the entire amount. So we got a $1,500 invoice plus the amount that the carrier paid for the lumper fee included in this invoice. That's the invoice from me going to the shipper. We have the rate quote between the shipper and I. We have the tender that we're going to give to the shipper as part of that invoice. The rate confirmation, that's between the carrier and I. I don't need to give that to the shipper. The BOL, I'm going to provide that to the shipper as well as part of the invoice because that is the POD. That's the proof that the items were delivered. We have that receipt here for the lumper fee. We have to have that in order to get reimbursed by the shipper. And last but not least, we have a invoice from the carrier. Again, I'm not going to include that with the carrier's paperwork. That's just for my uh, information. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. These are the steps that you need to take in order to get loads moved to make sure that you have all of the paperwork and have it organized. Do it in these steps. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your week. Until the next time, I wish you the very best in your life and business. If you're interested in learning about the freight broker business, check the description box. I'll leave a link there 
to my five video series titled How the Load Movement Process Works. Give you a chance to come into the office with me and you can watch me as I move loads, talk to shippers and carriers so you have a better understanding of how this business works. Also, if you're ready to get your load board, we are partnered with Truck Stop. I think that's the best load board in the business. I've been using it now for the last eight years. Highly recommend it to any truck driver, any freight broker that's ready to hit the ground running. See you at the top because the bottom is way too crowded.